has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bands, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible. Hanging out the bands, eating a burger, eating a bad apple with a bad attitude, hanging around a bunch of bad, out of bad, say bad, lot bad, new bad, 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 it's just bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City Studios in the Barola Palacio, right across the river into the woods from where Granny's going on a road trip with me in a few days. So today she went out and got a fresh sack of the Zercules in New York City. The Big Apple. Ooh, people dressed in plastic bags, to Brittany Travis, some kind of fashion shake it up to do it. All my friends come around, fucking throw the party up. Rats on the west side, the buzz of town. What a mess, the tides are my brain splattered all over, man. <laughs> the Prime Minister. Oh, should do it. Yeah, yeah. I think I might have caught some from Keith. It's only rock and roll, but I like it, like it. Yes, I do, but I like it. Hey, what's gigging? I'm Pharrell, along with your boy. Carver High this afternoon. And then, of course, uh, Bocce Balls running it with Big Daddy Ty Stick Jones at LTN in Kansas City Mo. Let's get a, a birthday roll call rocking, shall we? Josh Allen of the Jags. He's the Josh Allen that doesn't matter. He's 25 today. Cody Bellinger, 27. DJ LeMayhew, 34. Yachty Molina, 40. Spud Webb, 59. Wow. Michael Spinks, 66. Tony Kornheiser, 74, going on 104. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got afternoon day ball. Seattle checked in 6 4. That's a final. That's nine straight for the M's. And the Mets are all over the Braves, 7 to 1. They're in the eight. Brewers and Twins tied in many at ones in the six. Tigers 2 nothing on the Royals at Kaufman in the fourth in Kansas City. We got Arizona San Francisco coming up. The Giants beat the D backs last night. How about that one? 13 to nothing. Braves beat the Mets 4 to 1. Matt Olson with a two run shot. Brewers beat the Twins. We got an Adamas homer. Josh Hader not interested in going to the All Star game at all. That's interesting. Tigers beat the Royals 7-5. The Blue Jays fired their manager today. We got the Lions share coming up, plus Reds over the Yankees 4-3 and a choke job by the Bombers and the Boogie Down. Jonathan India, the hero. The Yankees were 49-0 when leading after eight innings before the loss. Aaron Boone not worried about it, or Clay Holmes for that matter, because he blew the save. Guardians and White Sox split a doubleheader. Abreu with a big home run in game two. The White Sox broadcasters, including Isaac Key and Blast, Tony LaRusso for another intentional walk that he called that was curious. Pirates won again. They beat the Marlins 3-2. O'Neal Cruz with a big triple. Jays beat the Phillies 4-3. George Springer, an unbelievable catch. Rays beat the Red Sox 3-2. Trevor Story leaves the game with a finger injury. Cards beat the Dodgers 7-6. Pujols with a shot. O's beat the Cubs 4-2, win their ninth in a row, and they reach 500, the humanity of it all. Every team in the AL East now at 500 or better. The Rockies beat the Padres 5-3, A's over the Rangers 14-7. Corey Seager for a fifth straight game. Ring the bell, Carver High, as the prop of mania continues on C to C as we make people all kinds of fat stacks. Bands make good dance. Bands make good dance. Bands make good dance. Bands make good dance. Angels started the year 27 to 17. They've gone 11 and 31 since. The Rockies beat the Padres 5 3. Charlie Longbeard with a three run shot. And we got all your all star game replacements. We welcome our radio affiliates to Coast to Coast on a midweek Where Do You Hurt Wednesday. It's Sirius XM Channel 159, Mighty or 1090 ESPN Radio in San Diego near Tijuana. Do you wanna? Sports map, sports byline. Good to have you with us. We'll break down all of tonight's games and the day games that are going on around the majors. The Jazz are willing to trade Spida. He's linked to the Knicks. Some people think it's inevitable. Kyrie Irving allegedly wants to stay with the Nets. Now, I don't believe a word that comes out of anyone's mouth about this. The Nets could end up keeping both Kyrie and Durant. Now, Durant, it's because nobody wants to trade their entire team for him because that's what they're asking for. The Nets asked the Raptors for Scotty Barnes, 
And Toronto said, screw you. Grizzlies tie the summer league record with 120 points in the game. Lakers beat the Clippers, Pat. Uh, last night, uh, the Pistons lost that game 101, 87 of the Pacers. 20 points for Matt Thurin. This guy has been going off. Celtics beat the Warriors 1392. EJ Liddell, a torn ACL. That's a bummer for the Pels. He's done. Tonight's summer league action. We got it all for you. Plus, Chris Middleton had wrist surgery. Pat Connaughton, our boy Patty, getting a three year, 30 mil extension in Bucktown. Danilo Gallinari, ready to play for the Celtics. We got him for you today. NBA updates their transition take foul rules. The Board of Governors have discussed a 30 team in season tournament. And Adam Silver doesn't like what he's seeing with. Players requesting trades with uh, so many years left on their deal. Mike DeCorsi will join us from the Sporting News to talk about all of it. Plus, Drano, Leno, Andrew Leno, former tour caddy, talking about the Open Championship. We got it all. Plus, I believe the sheet of integrity today, unless I'm mistaken, it's all happening and evolving quickly. Today in Carver High history, the fans clamor for it. We got the... Uh, open championship starting tomorrow. Tiger Woods loves St. Andrews. Tiger and Rory named honorary St. Andrews members. We got more Justin Thomas, Willie Z, Jordan Spieth on the show today. Dub Anderson previewing it. And uh, Xander Shotley in the last 12 months has won a gold medal. You name it. We got it all for you. Golf, football, everything. Grab a cold one. It's coast to coast. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a In half. game oh, live win. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. And then Garrett Cole will be the payup price here at $10,500. Uh, Washington in particular, David, 1-9 and nine in their last 10. Worst team in baseball by far. Uh, but pretty decent matchup tonight at home. Yeah, they stink. But Josiah Gray does not stink. Now, uh, he has definitely had some troubles with run prevention this season. He's given up, you know, six earned runs a couple times, seven earned runs a couple times. But even... The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. So, Connor, you see the odds. How do you blend the future and all the changes we will see in the coming years with what is actually going to happen in the present? I don't think it makes any difference. I think this; those are two totally separate deals. I, I don't think USC's 2022 outlook is dependent on what happens, you know, with their future move to the Big Ten. I think it's dependent on whether or not Caleb Williams is actually going to be good against a defense who can actually who can actually play football. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. Close, you can get some California programming. Get ready for one of the most expensive campaign races we've ever seen on your TV sets. Have you watched a Giants or yes. a Padres game? Yes, and the ads are absolutely insufferable. Vicious, I would say. Just, I mean, they're going at jugulars. Like, they're doing some real nasty, nasty <laughs> stuff to each other. The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. To roll with a guy like Xander Shopley that's as hot as he is. I think that you have to have a small piece of him in some aspect because history says at this tournament that guys that come in playing very well, whether it's a win in, in the five or six weeks coming in or a bunch of top tens in the five or six weeks coming in, they usually perform very well. Right. Uh, I think that you have to have a small piece. The Sports Grid Network. 
Want the thrill of a parlay bet packed into one single game? Then you're going to love One Game Parlay from BetMGM. Couldn't be easier. Just pick your game, select your bets, then combine them into a single parlay. One game, bigger payouts. Now you're betting with the king of sports books. Sign up today and your first bet is risk-free up to $1,000 when you use bonus code One Game. Win big with One Game Parlay from BetMGM. All right, we're all back on uh, Coast to Coast. Uh, we got tons of hockey news today as free agency opened up at around noon, and they went hog wild all day long. Plus, Scott Miller of the New York Times will join us to talk baseball. Don't forget, you got to get that BetMGM app and rock it on your uh, smartphone or whatever. Uh, bet $10 on the PGA Championship uh, or at the Open in St. Andrews. And when $200, if any player records a birdie, use the bonus code PGAOC2022. That's PGAOC2022 as your bonus code. Bet 10 bucks on the open, win 200 as soon as a birdie rolls. All right, Carver High, we started off today. I believe we got some uh, afternoon day ball going on, and it started with Seattle winning their ninth in a row. They did win their ninth in a row. Yes, we have a lot happening. Some afternoon day ball. Uh, we'll go through that as all the millions of dollars continue to get thrown around uh, in the National Hockey League this afternoon. We'll go through all the deals later uh, here on Coast to Coast. Six to four. The Mariners win the first game of the doubleheader down in D.C. So they have now won nine in a row. Of course, the rain out last night. They will play game two going for ten at about 6 o'clock Eastern, right after we finish Coast to Coast, Scotty, uh, we will take a look at the pitching matchup and the lines for that game later on. Have some games in progress, but first, we have another game about to start in about 25 minutes out in San Francisco, where we will have the Giants and the Diamondbacks here, rubber match uh, of the series after the Giants won last night. This afternoon, Scotty, you get... Uh, you get Zach Gallon for the Diamondbacks, and you get Brebby for the Giants. Giants minus 132 now with this total of eight. It's getting started here in the Bay. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously the Giants play a lot better at Oracle, but it hasn't been their year, right? Uh, but this is a tough game because I took Gallon and the Diamondbacks, even after they got pounced 13 zip last night. That was ugly, but I hit that game. Not only did I hit it, I told you it was going to be ugly. And uh, they rang it up. And now today they got this kid, uh, Brebbia, going. He's 4-1 with a 2-3 ERA. So it's not going to be easy. But I like Zach Gallon's stuff. And I'm going to take a shot with the Diamondbacks today at Oracle. Uh, you're right. Last night they were running it up on the D-backs. A lot of homers for the Giants, Scotty. In fact, how about two from Tiaro Estrada? Going yard twice on NBC Sports California. Here it is. Fly ball to left. Hit well. And out of here. He's done it again. He's got two tonight. Okay, two times tonight, the Diamondbacks have gone in and tried to jam Estrada. And two times he's turned him around, knocked him over the wall. And they go right in on the hands, and he says, that's where I like him. I mean, that was ugly uh, last night. It is what it is. They, they poured it on, and Estrada had a big night, and I think Webb was pitching. Uh, th that was easy money. I was all over the Giants last night, and the over, I might add. Let's go to Atlanta this afternoon, where the Mets and the Braves also playing rubber match of their series. Mets up right now, Scotty, top of the ninth, 7-2 to two on the Braves. They have homers from Escobar, Francisco Lindor, Mark Canna, Guillaume going yard again for the Mets this afternoon. So lots of long balls. Mets look like they're going to take two out of three here from the Braves guy. The Braves did get a homer from Matt Olson this afternoon. They also got one from him last night in a 4-1 to win on Bally Sports South. Swing, fly ball, oh. center. Nemo going back. Hit the track. Hit the wall. Matt Olson puts the Braves 
in front. Tried to sneak the fastball by him. Big mistake. Big mistake. Matt Olson got the burrow on the ball. Try to stay away, BJ. Missed his spot up and in. Oh, man. Got his hands in and got the burrow to bat on it. Big time hit right there. Well, let's time. calm down a little bit. I I, uh, I bet on the Mets today as well. It was my number five play on Pharrell and Events.com. So they're going to take that series, right? And then they uh, go back up two and a half games. So they went into it a game and a half. They leave two and a half. So the Scherzer win was huge. And then uh, this afternoon uh, to take the series. I believe they're not playing anymore in that set, right? It was just three games. Uh that was it for this one. Uh, backing the Bassett Hound this afternoon as it looks like he's going to get the win over Charlie Morton down in Atlanta. Next, we'll go to Minnesota, Scotty. Bottom six right now. Brewers and Twins tied at one. Brewers got a homer from Jace Peterson uh, to tie this game up just a little while ago. So bottom six, 1-1. One, one. Last night, they had to fight through a lot of raindrops in Minneapolis, but they eventually did get it finished. Brewers beat the Twins 6-3. to three. Willie Adamas, Scotty, having some year. Homers again on Bally Sports, Wisconsin. Willie Adamas puts a charge into one deep left field. It is up, and it is gone. Willie Adamas, a two-out, two-run blast. Well, there you go. Brewers still holding on over the Cardinals in the Central. Those are, in my view, at some level, clutch wins in many. And Josh Hader caused a little bit of a stir last night. Of course, it's supposed to be an honor, Scotty, when you get voted into the All-Star game. They expect everybody to go. Sometimes if you have an injury, they give you a pass. Sometimes people make up injuries to not go to the All-Star game. Your boy Josh, uh, he doesn't need to do any of that. He flat out said, I ain't going. I ain't got time for this. I got other things to do. I got to spend some time with my family. It's a long year. Uh, here's Hater telling everybody, screw you. I mean, everybody knows uh, the grind of, of baseball, but uh, I think the ultimate grind is, is being away from your family and, and not being able to see them as much as uh, you possibly can. But the fortunate part is that we have the other four or five months in the off season to, to spend that time. So it's a, a give and take, but, um, you know, obviously family is uh, the most important. Oh, yeah, whatever. That was so pathetic because uh, he's making hundreds of millions of dollars in his career, and it must be brutal for him to work six months a year. And then once every five days or so, uh, how often does the guy go out there? Maybe I, I'll, give, I'll give you this. Three out of five nights he pitches, yeah. and then uh, he pitches one inning, makes millions, and then he's going to uh, pull that uh, I miss my wife and kids card. I told you, don't get me started on the family. No one that plays pro sports cares about their family. Trust me. I know. And I'm right. No, listen, every one of them, they either have multiple divorces or they're still married. And they don't even like them. They don't even like their wife. They don't even talk to their kids. All they care about is money. Trust me, you. They talk to their agent more than they do their wife and kids. Believe me, you. And every one of my friends that's a pro athlete tells me the exact facts. And it's all, it's documented. All these guys, oh, he works too much. 24 hours a day he's in the office. Yeah, and then Urban Meyer. I miss my family. My ass. No one misses their family when they make that kind of money. Money is the only thing you miss. Having fresh stacks in your hand. Trust me. This guy hater misses his wife and kids. My ass. My he ass. Some quality time with the family. Doesn't want to take the yeah, trip sure. to Los Angeles sure. early next week. Be involved in the all-star festivities. Uh, uh -huh. The Royals lead the Tigers 3-1 to one in the bottom of the fourth. That is the only other game going on right now. The Tigers beat the Royals 7-5 to five last night, Scotty. So there you go for the Royals. Very exciting. Boy, those <laughs> Detroit-Kansas City games. Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like, so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game, oh, live, man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. So we're taking a look at Heinz Field, changing its name over to Akrashur Stadium. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? You have to understand, it's about making money. Here, get ready. Are we not too far off of Lambeau Field being Toyota Stadium, Yankee Stadium being Ford Stadium, and Fenway Park being sponsored by Snickers? I don't know, but this environment is coming. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Was last year Pete Gibson? Like, is that is this basically going to be who he is? Or do you think that there's another gear? Well, I mean, I actually think his rookie season was much more Pete Gibson because they were using him as a pass catcher that season. Uh, he had 44 targets in 10 games as a rookie, had 52 targets in 16 games last year, did miss the one game with injury. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Harrow inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports. St. Andrews, the press center at the university just next to the old course, 150th British Open. Everybody excited about all here. How about the university itself, a leader in tech, esports, and other events? In fact, in the United States, esports engagement doubled from 20 to 21 and expect a 61% additional increase. 2022. That's $610 million and more to come. This is all phases of eSport. We're thinking about an Olympic acceptance of the event. We're thinking about more and more colleges and universities framing their programs around eSports. We're talking about how it's accepted as a sport for people that'll help work on countries' national security and design recognition, all most of things over time. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is the lion's share. Brought to you by Bet MGM. All right, Carver High. Uh, I mean, this has gotten to be old hat now every day, hitting the lion's share and just mopping up money for people. It's the same thing last night with the great call on Seeger. And I mean, that's probably just the beginning. I mean, it's just every night. I know we're hitting strikeouts, we're hitting totals, wow. we're hitting homers, we're hitting everything. Well, you're right about the strikeouts. How about the clean sweep last night, 4-0? Uh, with the strikeout props. Uh, Cole ended up going uh, over. Sale went over the four and a half. Lyles went over the four and a half. Spencer Strider went over because you went on over on all four of our strikeout props yesterday and a clean sweep. You throw in the Seager homer. You throw in My the God. Orioles win and over five and a half in the uh. game props. We pushed on the Angels Astros under in the first five. Landed right on the number. Uh, there of four. So, uh, but all in all, I'd say a pretty darn good night for the lion's share. Uh, let's get it's at it. Thousands again. of dollars is what that is. <laughs> thousands. Let's get back at it tonight on the lion's share. Strikeout props. Let's do it. We're going right back to the Bronx, Scotty, because yes, the Yankees blew that game in the ninth inning last night, but Cole showed you that you can deal against this Cincinnati Red lineup. You can get a lot of strikeouts. Luis Severino is going to go tonight. His number, six and a half, plus 100 to the over, minus 155 
to the under. Now, Severino, Scotty, is under this number in his last two starts. He was over it in the five starts before it, but I ain't as scared because the Reds strike out a ton. I'm going over with Louie tonight. Yeah, so am I. I. He just throws so hard, and I don't believe in that Reds lineup. Now, I'll give you that they stole that game last night. That was enormous yes. for them in that ninth inning, and especially against the Yankees, who have never blown a game the entire season until last night. That was ugly, that loss, any way you slice it. But, again, Cole was dominant, striking out guys left and right. I think Severino will do the same thing tonight. Next, we will go to, right now, your leader uh, in the betting market for the American League, Cy Young. Dirty Harry McClanahan tonight for the Rays down at the Trop against the Red Sox. Seven and a half is the number. Minus 110 to the over, minus 130 to the under. He is over this total in six of his last seven starts. He faced the Red Sox twice in April, Scotty, and he had seven strikeouts in both, uh, excuse me, in the one start. He had one start, he had seven strikeouts. He's second in the league in strikeouts right now in the 140s. Yeah, you know, I'm, that's a real tough number for him to hit tonight against Boston. Boston uh, lost, what, the first two games of that series? Am I, am I crazy? Uh, I think they'll be uh, in this game tonight. I'm going to say under on Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry for the under tonight. Next, Cardinals and Dodgers out at Bush. No, we are not going to go to Tony Gonsolin, who we've had the last few times with his four and a half. We'll go to Adam Wainwright, Scotty, of the Cardinals against the Dodger lineup. Three and a half is the number for Wainwright. Big juice here, minus 175 to the over, plus a buck 25 to the under. He did go under it in his last start against the Phillies, but... He's over three and a half and six of the seven starts before that. I think he can get four against the Dodgers tonight. Yeah, I'm going to go over on this one as well because, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's easy pickings for him at Bush. I've always told you that I love this guy when he pitches at home uh, as opposed to on the streets. So I'm going to go with you on that. I'll take the over. I think he gets four. And I think for the bonus ball in that game, Gonsolin with the four and a half, uh, I kind of like the over with him as well. After the Dodgers lose last night, I think you get a good performance from Tony against the Redbirds. And for the last strikeout, we are not changing something that has worked uh, so well here on the lion's share, and that is Otani tonight, Scotty, going for the Angels against the Astros. His last three starts, by the way, number six and a half tonight, it's a little low. It's been seven and a half the last few. Minus 165 to the over, plus 115 to the under. 10 strikeouts against Miami. 11 strikeouts against the White Sox. 13 strikeouts against the Royals. He's faced the Astros twice this year. He had 12 strikeouts and nine strikeouts in those two starts. He faces them again tonight. I mean, that's all you need to know, that it's an over. I mean, he's faced them twice and blew their doors off. So I'm going back to the well with Otani again. He's made us all kinds of money. There you go for the strikeouts. How about some taters tonight? I want to get two tonight, Scotty. I'm tired of one. We're getting one every night. We're getting Seager. We're, getting, we're, getting, we're kind of moving along with one tater a night. I want to get the double tonight. Give me two all taters right. here uh, on the lion's share first. I think the Yankees, after an awful loss, are going to bust out in a big way against the Reds tonight. Donaldson has actually been pretty hot, Scotty. Three homers, 11 RBIs in his last six games for the Bombers. We're looking for him to go yardage tonight, plus 225 for Josh Donaldson. Yeah, I'm going to stay off of Donaldson hitting a home run. I hope you're right, though, because, uh, you know, I hope they hit 15 home runs uh, against the Reds. So... <laughs> Uh, I hope I hope you hit the bat. I don't think he'll hit one tonight. I'm looking at this like last week. Yankees had a tough loss to the Pirates, a team that they should beat. They came out the next night, and they smoked them. Tough loss to Cincinnati, team they should beat. I think they come out and smoke them, and we get ourselves a lot of homers. Next, let's go to Toronto, where we had Charlie Montoya get chopped today, Scotty. Montoya out with the Blue Jays as they have had big expectations, have not gotten it done. They have the Phillies in town tonight. Yes, they are facing Zach Wheeler. No, I do not care, because when you get me plus 450 for Vladdy Jr. 
to go yard with maybe a little charged up Toronto team with uh, Montoya going out the door. I'm going to take Vladdy tonight. I like Vladdy. I'll go with you on that, Homer. I also, uh, you know, I, I'm not that deep into the scene up there. Obviously, I went up there and went to some games. And uh, I saw him when they had won eight in a row with Montoya. Uh, I didn't know his record was, you know, dead ringer, wins and losses over four seasons, 236, 236, whatever it was. All I know is um, they're a wild card team to me. They are not better than the Yankees. They have to realize who they are. I think they have a really good lineup and decent pitching. I think they're a playoff caliber team. And... I don't like the move of firing him right now when they are, in my view, on their way to the wild card. So uh, I, I don't like the decision, but I don't know what went into it in terms of why they fired him today of all days. It makes no sense to me. I don't know about you. You tell me. I, I don't like the move. I was a little surprised by it. I also do think they have underachieved a bit. I think that with how much... They got pumped up before the season. Some of the moves that they made, they probably expected to be a little bit better than they are right now. But a lot, some of that falls on the players too. I was, I saw earlier there, like one of the worst teams in baseball. You know, hitting with runners in scoring position. They're, the guys aren't getting it done. Uh, we'll see if a little change in the dugout can do that. All right, we're going with the double with Otani tonight, Scotty. Not only are we taking the over on the strikeouts. My man rakes against the Astros, plus 375. Otani, big on the mound, big with the stick tonight on the lion's share. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if I'm going to bet on him to have all the strikeouts, I might as well throw in some hot sauce, too, a little 375 <laughs> piece of Tabasco. We don't do hot tags on Coast to Coast. We do hot sauce, baby. Well, for my last home run, I'm going to go a little hot sauce uh, here as well, Scotty. I'm looking for the White Sox tonight. They're facing Savali in Cleveland. A lot of homers last night. We're going back to the well. Eloy Jimenez, more the price for me. I think 425, really good for him. I'm looking for a bust out. That's my long shot tonight, Jimenez against Cleveland. I didn't even know he was in the lineup. I'm not buying him to hit a home run. I got your other two I'm rolling with. Vladi right. and Otani. There's our well, two let's, block. Let's get those two in the clubhouse tonight. All right, game props tonight. I told you when we talked about Donaldson, I'm expecting the Yankees to come out and beat up the Reds tonight. Yankees to win over nine and a half runs scored in the game. Double figures tonight between the Yanks and the Reds. Plus 175. Yankees win over nine and a half runs scored. Yeah, I think they're going to score 10 runs themselves. So I'm with you on that. I'll go, I'll go on that bet. Let's sail. Next, we're going to go to an under now. They've scored a lot of runs, the A's and the Rangers, the last couple of nights. But you get the A's best pitcher in Blackburn tonight. You get John Gray for Texas. I'm taking the Rangers to win, Scotty, and under eight and a half runs scored in the game at plus 155. Rangers and under eight and a half. Yeah, uh, I can't go with you on that because I, as you know, bet on Blackburn a lot and I took him tonight, so I can't go with you there. Okay, final one is the big push all the chips in for me tonight. How about plus 425? The Phillies and the Blue Jays both score five or more runs tonight. I don't care that Wheeler's pitching. He's going to get racked up there in Canada. Both teams score five or more runs. We get a crazy game up there at the Rogers plus 425. Let's go. <laughs> well, I like your stones, but I don't I don't think so. Not with Wheeler on the mound. I don't think they're going to score that many runs. I'm not taking that bet either. We're busting out tonight, baby. We changed the manager. The sticks are going to get hot against Wheeler. The Phillies will score some runs too. 425 chip tonight on the game props. Let's get it. Lions share for a Wednesday. Wheeler won't even let the Jays have five runs. <laughs> They'll strike out 10. The Lion's Share, presented by Bet MGM.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full Buffalo. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose, too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. Oh, boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Early Line. But Josh Allen ranked third on that top five because this is what caught my eye. In front of Tom Brady, Josh Allen, 7-1 to to win MVP. We've talked about it a lot. The Bills not only favored to win the AFC, but favored to win the Super Bowl. It just is becoming clearer by the day that this is the Buffalo Bills season for a lot of people. Only on SportsGrid. The morning after. Do you agree that Kenny Pickett should be the betting favorite right now to win NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. I don't, Ben, and I've said this a few times before, but I don't think any of these quarterbacks should be on the top list for Offensive Rookie of the Year because I don't believe any of them are going to have significant yep. starting time unless something major happens. You look at Kenny Pickett at plus 550, the favorite to win Offensive Rookie of the, the Year. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. And then Garrett Cole will be the payup price here at $10,500. Uh, Washington in particular, David, 1-9 and nine in their last 10. Worst team in baseball by far. Uh, but pretty decent matchup tonight at home. Yeah, they stink. But Josiah Gray does not stink. Now, uh, he has definitely had some troubles with run prevention this season. He's given up, you know, six earned runs a couple times, seven earned runs a couple times. But even... The Sports Grid Network. Yeah, Carver, hi. Uh, I was none too pleased last night watching that the Yankee meltdown in the ninth inning and the boogie down. Yeah, that was an ugly one. They haven't had many of those this year, uh, but a late inning meltdown from Clay Holmes in the ninth. They wasted a really strong performance by Garrett Cole as well. Seven innings, four hits, 11 strikeouts, extremely dominant performance for Cole, but... Holmes, who's going to the All-Star game, had himself a very rough ninth. Uh, he walked, guys. He had dribblers get up the middle. He hit batters. Nothing went well. Eventually, he had to go out. Wandy Peralta came in, Scotty, and almost pulled the rabbit out of the hat with the bases loaded, no outs, as he got two outs, but then Jonathan India put the Reds ahead for good on Bally Sports Cincinnati. That is looped over second, right center, base hit. Farmer scores. Solano around third, and the Reds lead. Down to their last strike. India plates a pair, and Cincinnati takes a 4-3 advantage in the ninth inning. I've seen it all. I mean. <laughs> it, is, it is hard to imagine. The Yankees to were 49-0. When leading after eight innings this season before the loss, on the other side, the Reds had not won a game all year when losing, going into the ninth inning. So that was their first come-from-behind win 
in the late stages. Let's hear from Aaron Boone, Scotty. Not worried about Clay Holmes after one and a half kind of shaky performances in a row here from Clay after being named to the All-Star team. Here's Booney. I know it's uncharacteristic of Clay, but he struggled in his last outing too. Is there any concern about usage or fatigue with him? Uh, I don't think so. Um, you know, I, I would quibble with he struggled in his last outing. Um, you know, he walked Bogarts and put a ball on the ground and then one, two, three in the ninth. So, um, you know, I think this is an outlier. Um, would certainly pay attention to it, but um, I don't think it was anything more than him just being out of whack tonight. I mean, that was it. Uh, you can't expect a guy to be perfect every single time no. he pitches. And I think, frankly, he got the news he was going to Lipstick City to the All-Star game, and that got his head big, and well, he hasn't look. been the same since. I mean, Team 61 and 26, they have a guy who's been absolutely locked down all year. I mean, I, that girl was wrong. I mean, last night was his first really bad performance of the entire season. And how about the people in the crowd that actually had the stones to boo him boo last him. night when he's walking? Like, look, I get it. He blew the game. I mean, the guy has been ice all year, and you're, you're 61 and 26. Like... Let's get a little perspective here, uh, all right, on what's going on. I get well, you don't want to no lose one ever the said, Reds, but uh, still. No one ever said anything about the fans in the Bronx uh, no, you know, I know. being smart. I know. I, I've heard all I can take no, about, all oh, the, the Yankee fans, uh, and you hear this all the time, that they're smarter than most baseball fans. Smart and, baseball and the Nick fans. fans are, they know basketball, yeah. and really yeah, uh, the Mecca. what they are is, and I live here, Thanks. Uh, New York fans are idiots. <laughs> we'll they're go drunk to Chicago idiots. now. That's what they are. They're all bunch of they're all bunch of ass hat drunk idiots. That's what they are. Uh, that I don't disagree with you for pretty much every single fan base uh, in the New York metropolitan area, uh, including the ones that I root for. The Guardians and the White Sox split a doubleheader yesterday in Cleveland, Scotty. Of course, Shane, don't call me Justin Bieber, threw a complete game gem in the first one to give the Guardians the win. In the nightcap, the White Sox bat, Scotty, actually got going. Jose Abreu getting it started in Game 2 on NBC Sports Chicago. Oh. Jose tattoos this ball to center field. Look out. back at the wall, and it is gone. Jose Abreu, a two-run home run, and the Sox have taken their first early lead in this series and their first lead overall. Yeah, I'm calming down with uh, let's talk about the White Sox every day like they have a chance. Yeah. I'm done with that. Like, well, I don't uh, care. They won a game. So what? I think the broadcasters have had enough uh, of what's going on as well. I listened to a little bit of this uh, last night and this morning. So they got on Tony. He pulled that trick again where uh, the pitcher was ahead in the count, and he decided to intentionally walk somebody. Jose Ramirez fouled a pitch, and then Tony walked him. Uh, so the announcers on the air just completely skewered him for that. And then Ozzie Gian and Scott Pesednik, after, in between the doubleheader, they just bashed Tony pillar to post. I mean, I know they got Ozzie on there to say crazy stuff. Uh, I mean, he was just killing La Russa. Have a little fire. Get on the team. Say they're not playing well. It's not going well for Tony right now, even on uh, the cable network, Scotty, that the White Sox play on. Well, I think he's going to get fired. So I do too. Uh, it's got the bleeding's got to stop. They have you talk about, you know, the Jays are four games over 500. They fire their manager and the White Sox can't get out of their own way. They can't even uh, walk across the street without problems. So I think nope. they should fire La Russa, get a young manager in there and turn their season around now or never. They will not win with Tony La Russa. Everyone's against him. The fans, the media, the broadcasters. When have you ever heard on a team broadcast the announcers bashing the manager? Tell me where that happens. You're not allowed. Yeah, they like, were... You're not allowed to do that to Aaron Boone on yes. No. You're not allowed to do it. You're not allowed to talk bad about Brian Cashman, you know, Hal Steinbrenner. 
you talk bad about them, you will be out of work by the morning. They were completely puzzled uh, and let everybody know about it when Tony walked Ramirez yesterday. Let's, let's not forget, the... though. Uh, let's yes. not forget. Listen, Ozzy's a giant male organ. I mean, he is just a giant, <laughs> yes. you know, sex toy. Yes. Okay, so uh, no one respects <laughs> Tony. Or uh, like, I love Tony. I've been friends with Tony forever. I do not respect Ozzy Guillen as far as I can spit a lug out of my mouth onto the ground. He is a piece of shack. And everybody knows it in baseball. He ain't got no friends except in Chicago. For some reason, they still like him in Chicago. If I'm they wrong, do. if I'm wrong, then how come that guy couldn't sniff a job if it hit him in the face? He couldn't get a job in Major League Baseball to save his ass because he's a clown. He's an absolute clown. And don't even tell me I'm wrong. He's an idiot. And I'll beat his ass, a little freak. I'll slap him around too. Him and Tortorella. I'll beat Ozzie Guillen's ass. He acts like he's some kind of tough guy. I'll give him 6'4", 225, something to think about. The Buckos were like at it again. I don't like him at all. I can't night. stand that I don't little like mouth. Big shot, big tough guy with his mouth. I'll back it up. I'll give you something to think about. I'll break your nose. Take him inside. Get Post him up. Get him down low. Let's see how he likes it there. Down underneath Ozzie the basket. Let's put what Ozzie a wussy. In there. He was a uh, terrible manager, too. He was awful. Uh, let's go to the Buckos, Scotty, who have he now won. He sucked as a player, too. Four in a row for the Buckos. They beat the Marlins in South Beach last night. Let's raise the Jolly Roger with an O'Neill Cruz RBI triple. Oh. AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh. Okay. And oh. Cruz headed toward the corner. It will Watch get to the wall. Castillo is going to be waved by Ravello. Here comes the throw to the plate. He's in there. And O'Neill Cruz picks up another ribby. And the Pirates take a 2-1 lead. Got to love those battling bucks, baby. Just That's because we had Sherapan wearing that sleeveless bucko jersey yesterday, son. I think it had something to do with it. We mentioned that the Jays have chopped Charlie Montoya. Always good to get chopped off of a win. Jays beat the Phillies 4-3 last night up in Toronto. Very rare we give you the defensive highlights on Coast to Coast, Scotty. But this George Springer catch was so good, we play that today on Sportsnet. Well hit ball to deep center field. Race in the back. Yeah, Springer! Oh, what a catch! A sensational play by George Springer in deep center. Yeah, diving catch. It was uh, rock star status. Uh, you got to stand up and cheer him for that one. It was a great play. Uh, it was a tremendous catch from Springer, that's for sure. Last night, Scotty, the Rays beat the Red Sox 3-2 to two down at the Trop. The story, of course, though, Chris Sale pr pitched pretty well. Five innings, three hits, five strikeouts through 78 pitches. Actually left the game with the lead, uh, and the Red Sox bullpen could not finish the job. Said he felt good after the game. Yes, it's bad to lose, Scotty, but it seems like a little bit of a win knowing that Sale came out of it pretty good. Listen, if they get this guy going, uh, anything's possible. I mean, uh, Evaldi and Sale, they mean business. And they're already a, a wild card. They're already headed toward uh, the second half as a playoff caliber team. They just split with the Yankees. Getting Sale back is like, you know, enormous. That's like getting your boy back in San Diego any day now at shortstop. Having sail back in that rotation, that's enormous. The Cardinals beat the Dodgers last night at Bush. They built a 6-1 to one lead, had to hold on for the 7-6 to six win. Early on, though, Scotty, who got him started? Going to the All-Star game for the last time. Albert Pujols, number 685 on Bally Sports Midwest. The 0-1. Albert hits it out to deep left. Fans loving it here at Bush. 
I mean, I just can't even believe it. Like, to be honest with you, what he's done. Yeah. Uh, not only uh, what he did with the Dodgers, <laughs> what he uh, is doing with the Cardinals. I mean, I wrote that guy off two years ago, and he's still humiliating me. I mean, it's unbelievable what that guy's doing. Uh, certainly is. And uh, like we mentioned the other day, I think it's pretty cool that they're going to have him and Miggy out in L.A. for that All-Star game. At least those guys respect it at the end of their careers, unlike some guys who just don't want to go uh, because they're young and they think they're going to be there every single year. Break out the Orioles, Scotty. Nine in a row. They've reached the 500 mark. 4-2 win at Wrigley against the Cubbies last night. Ramon Urias at it again. Two-run homer on Masson. Ramon Urias oh. in the air to left field. No chance for Hap here. Way back to the last row of the bleachers. Ramon Urias with a massive shot into Glen Allen Hill territory. And the Orioles have taken the lead at Wrigley. I mean, honestly, uh, is there any better story in baseball? No. The Orioles have won. I mean, you got Seattle doing the exact same thing, winning nine in a row today, and here they are as the story. And then the Orioles winning nine in a row is up here. It's like, it's so unheard of what Baltimore's doing. They haven't done anything in 20 years. So I think it's crazy what they're doing. I think they're going to lose tonight, though. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The Pat McAfee Show. Here we are, Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. Baker Mayfield is going to... <gasps> the Carolina Panthers. Wow. Wow. Congrats to the Carolina Panthers, who for another season are taking a shot on who is going to be our franchise quarterback, and we will run the carousel until we find our guy. Maybe it's Baker. Shout out to the Queen City. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. Farrah and I oh. played golf in 110 degrees for four hours yesterday. I didn't sweat at all. You melt. You melt don't sweat. I was baking, but I was not <laughs> sweating. There was no <laughs> sweat to be had. You cannot sweat when it's 110 degrees in Vegas. Jules is really going to appreciate the graphic. Julie Nedlow is soft. <laughs> Hopefully she stays up tonight to watch the replay on sports screen. <laughs> <laughs> I know t-shirt. <laughs> Screenshot this and turn this into a t-shirt. We're the Bostonian versus the book. The early line. Let's factor this in here. You take a look at DK Metcalf. He's a pure wide receiver on a football team that we expect to win like five or six games. So you know what that means, Kevin? Probably going to be down a lot in the second half and particularly in the fourth quarter where you enter into the fourth quarter with 55 yards receiving. You leave that game with a buck 25. Another team doesn't care because they won by two touchdowns. But you got your filler yards at the in the end of the game. And Only on Sports Grid.
Uh, you know, Carver High, I'm uh, Montoyo's only friend, apparently. I want to know, hopefully, uh, the prime minister doesn't think I'm nuts. I, I don't know uh, why they whacked that guy. Four games over 500, headed for the wild card. Honestly, like, and the guy, who's the new guy? Schneider? I don't even know who that is. Like, what John are you doing? Schneider. They should have just let him manage the rest of the year. That's a decent team. I know there's other baseball you got for me. There is other baseball. Uh, Charlie Montoya, chopped. Uh, up in Toronto this afternoon. See you later. Uh, the Rockies beat the Padres 5-3 to three last night uh, as well, Scotty. Um, uh, I got so out of order here with this stuff today. The A's beat the Rangers 14-7. to seven. Now, that game is in the 12th inning last night. The A's ended up scoring eight runs, Scotty, yeah. including a Chad Pinder grand slam. But guess what? I don't care about all the runs the A's scored because Corey Seager homered for the fifth straight game, and we had him in the lion's share, and that's all that really matters. Who cares that the Rangers lost? Seager hit a homer, Scotty, and that's what counts to me. Oh, there you go. And that paid off big for us. It certainly did. The Astros beat the Angels 6-5. to five. Astros had a lead. Angels came all the way back to tie it at 5 in the 8th, but in the ninth, Kyle Tucker puts Houston ahead for good on AT&T Sportsnet Southwest. That ball is hit well to right field. That is going to be down for a hit. Snagged there by Ward, but scoring is Altuve. Tucker is going to get to second. RBI double for Kyle Tucker. It's a 6-5 Astros lead. Yeah, the uh, Angels season is over. I mean, they've gone 11 uh, and 31 yeah. since they were 27 and 17. Their season's over. And Mike Trout's got a bad back. I mean, they are finished. Mike Trout left the game last night. Uh, well, I doubt he'll play tonight as well. Think about that. 11 and 31, and you've got Trout and Otani on your team. And you go 11 and 31 in a 42 game stretch. And they ask this. You wonder why they ask the guy every week if he still wants to be on the Angels. Honestly.